Oh, what's going on you guys? So I just picked up a new ride and it's been a while since I picked up a new RC other than the X-Max that I just picked up. But this one's from a company called Charisma RC. I never even heard of them to be honest with you. But when I bought my X-Max, I saw this thing sitting on the shelf and it was way too cool. I had to have it. Let's check it out. So this thing's a 1986 Subaru Brat and the body's licensed by Subaru. So it's really authentic looking and like I said, I never even heard of Charisma RC before, so I'm pretty psyched to see what this thing's all about. So just looking at the box right there, you can see it's got a 313 mm wheelbase. You can see some of the features. Solid axle, double triangulated four-link suspension, steel frame, waterproof lipo safe ESC. I'll probably run this thing on nickel metal. Cool thing about nickel metal batteries are they're reliable. In any trail truck or anything like that, I always go with reliability first. You can take a 20 year old nickel metal battery that's completely discharged, charge it up and it works mint. You can never do that with a LiPo. 35 turn motor, front bumper with a winch mount, true beadlock wheels. Looking at the picture, it doesn't really look like a beadlock wheel, but I'll see when I open it up. So other side of the box just shows pictures of the chassis and the 1.9 beadlock wheels, controller and all that stuff. So let's get this thing open. See, this package is pretty good. I want to come out of there. There we go, come on. Jeez, more boxes. Charisma definitely gets an A plus for patching. Wow, there's more. Or something, I'll get this thing out of the package. It's a real cliffhanger. Ooh, solid axles. All right, here we go. Manual inside, what are they trying to say? Trying to say you need a manual? Oh. Whoever did this definitely knows how to package your RC. You gotta get this guy working for me. Here's a controller and stuff. Oh, these are the bumpers right here. So it looks like you got to assemble the bumpers. Oh, when they said manual inside, they must have been inside this. This thing. Oops. No battery addition. I'm not even going to try to read that. I want to call it the most high quality, but it's 2.4 gigahertz. Four double A's. Overall, it's not bad though. Got a little, little carrying handle. I like that. All right, now let's see what this thing's all about. More packaging. Oh, body clips have a little bend to them. I like that.
All right, look at that. That's handsome. Definitely a cool looking truck. I always wanted one of these. These these trucks, the full size ones, were a little before my time, but I always thought they were cool. Someday I'd like to find a good clean one. All right, so let's pop the body off. Definitely looks like a rugged little truck. It's got oil filled shocks, steel frame, motor transmissions right in the middle. To my connector, I'll be changing that. I'll show you what I'm changing to in a second. Solid axles. Ooh, the links are all metal too. Drive shafts are steel too. I like that. They're like little CVDs right out of the factory, so it should be pretty durable. We'll have to see. Lock diffs front. Lock diff rear. So these are supposedly bead lock wheels. Right there, so there's a center bolt to hold it to the axle. And there's five Allen head screws. So I bet you this is a two piece wheel and it clamps. More than likely, this is an insert. 35 turn brush motor. Little battery track. I guess things, this thing's good up to 2S, but like I said earlier, I'll be running this on nickel metal. So far, it looks like a pretty neat little truck. Pretty sucks to get this thing going, so I'm gonna take it for a ride, charge up a battery. But before I do, I gotta switch this connector, so I'll show you what I run for connectors. So these are the battery connectors I use. So these are called Anderson Power Poles. They've been around for a long time. And you can get these things anywhere from like, I think like four amp all the way up to 180 amp. And they're all pretty much the same, it's just they give a different size wire. Let me show you how these work. So when you buy them, they come in bags like this. You got red and black, positive, negative. So they're real simple to use. You just got your red for positive, black for negative, and then you got these pieces. Your wire just goes right in there. And it's pretty cool because you can either solder these or Anderson, they recommend crimping them. They sell a special crimper. So you, if you don't have a solder iron or if you suck at soldering, these are perfect. I don't know why these aren't used more often in RTs, but these things are awesome. I love these connectors. Another cool feature is if you're running two batteries, you can easily switch these around. You can run them like that, oops, or like that, or you could just leave them loose, disconnected. So that means you can switch these between parallel or series, meaning you can either double your voltage or double your battery capacity. So that's one of the things I, I love about the Anderson Power Poles, that and I've never had a fail. There's nothing wrong with the factory to my connector. The only time I've ever run into a problem is once in a while, I've had the center pins pull apart when you plug a battery in and so, like I said earlier, when it comes to trail trucks, I like these things to be reliable. Reliability comes first, so for me, the nickel metal batteries are just, have always been insanely reliable. And those Anderson Power Pool connectors have been awesome and reliable too. I've never had them fail at all, but I have had these fail, so that's why I run the Andersons. This is my Matco Tools coilless solder iron. I love this thing. I showed this in another video. This thing's awesome. You just hold this button and it takes like three seconds to heat up to the temperature required to solder. So that thing's awesome. Matco Tools SKR-01. Definitely if you want an awesome soldering iron, pick one of those up. So now these things are locked in and you can either leave them loose like this or they can slide together. Really like that. They got these slide pieces on the side. So you can always switch them around because, like I said, if you wanted, you can either run your batteries in parallel or series. Just make sure you hook those together and have a battery handy so you know you hook them up right. So you got red and black right there. So they're just like that. And now you have an awesome connector rated up to 180 amps. Nice little foam washer to protect the body. I just noticed too, it's got an adjustable body post so you can raise or lower the body. So now I'll get the battery in this thing, take it for a spin.
Yeah, so not bad. Definitely pleased with that. It's pretty quick. It's quicker than I thought it would be. It's definitely faster than the TRX-4. I want to say it's better than the TRX-4. You could definitely see some aspects of it are on the cheaper side. Because keep in mind, this truck runs for about $250, which is definitely not bad for a hobby-grade trail truck. With a couple upgrades, this thing could be awesome. Its biggest flaw was the turning radius and the slow servo. So I think all I need to do is upgrade the servo. And I happen to have a ton of these kicking around. So these are Savix waterproof titanium servos. And because I have a ton of cloud busters and I'm a businessman, I contacted Savix and was like, listen, what kind of deal can you give me if I buy a ton of these at once? So we negotiated a deal and anyway, I ended up buying a case of these Savix waterproof titanium gear servos. I'll pop this in. And this thing has a four-link front where the TRX-4 has a three-link front, so the steamer is a little bit different. You can see right there, it's got a servo mounted on the chassis with a drag link and a center link. So it is pretty much like a TRX-4. So I don't know why the turning radius sucks so bad. Maybe it's a travel of the servo, I don't know. So I'll pop that Savix in and see how it goes. A long time ago, like two years ago, when I first started my channel, I made what's called an RTI ramp. Let me get some of this other stuff out of the way. This is pretty cool. So if you're wondering why I don't finish many of my projects pretty quickly, it's because I'm always doing stuff for everybody else. So this is an A scale version of my full size monster truck. If you check out some of my earlier videos, I made a chromoly one of these, but this guy asked me to make an aluminum one. So I was like, yeah, no problem, I could do that. And this is the jig table I made a while ago for the chromoly chassis. And this mimics my full-size monster truck exactly but it's in a scale so every piece part bend is identical to my full-size monster truck and this is very time consuming because all these pieces right here i have to cut and notch out so they meet up to the tubes perfectly so that takes a long time so that's pretty cool it's a 6061 aluminum chassis which is one of the strongest aluminums you can get other than 7075, but the problem with 7075, it's non-weldable, so this is the strongest weldable aluminum that I know of. And once this thing's done, I'm going to send it out to get heat treated, so it's going to be even stronger. So let me get this out of the way, and we'll see how the Subaru scores on the RTI ramp. So the way an RTI ramp works is RTI stands for Ramp Travel Index. So you have a 20 degree ramp, and a long time ago some people used to use a 22 and a half degree ramp, but 20 degree ramp is the standard. So you go a distance in inches divided by wheelbase times 1000, and this is an 18 inch ramp. And if you look right here, I marked out the inches all the way up to 18 inches. So it's distance in inches divided by wheelbase times 1000. And that gives you your RTI score. So a normal vehicle like a like a Jeep Cherokee or something like that in stock form will score about a 500 so it doesn't matter if it's full size or a 10 scale or whatever it's distance in inches divided by wheelbase times 1000 so let's see what this thing scores so the way you score an RTI value is how far this thing travels up before one of the wheels lifts off so let's see what this thing can do So right there it's lifting off at about 11. So it's about 11 inches and this thing's lifting off. So let's see what that comes up with. So because this thing went 11 inches, we're going to divide that by the wheel basis, which is 313 millimeters. Problem is, is we're working in inches, but lucky for you, Cloud Busted is also a mathematician, so I can convert that to inches. So we have 313 millimeters. We're going to divide that by 25.4. That's how you convert millimeters to inches, is you divide by 25.4, or if you want to convert inches to millimeters, it's opposite. You multiply it by 25.4. So get, that gives us a wheelbase of 12.32 inches. So we're going to go 11. That's the inches. That's how far I went up the ramp. And divide that by wheelbase, which is 12.32. And that equals that, and we're going to multiply that by 1,000. And that gives us an RTI score of 892.85. So that's pretty respectable. 
a lot better than like a factory vehicle of about 500. So not bad, I'm definitely impressed with this thing. Also, it's got an awesome drag brake. So I'm really curious to see how this thing's gonna do on like a, like a rock crawling course. And luckily where I bought this at was my local hobby store, RC Madison in Field, Connecticut. They have an awesome indoor course, so I think I'll have to do a little bit of work to this, tune the suspension, definitely put that servo in, take it up there, see how it goes on like a professional rock crawling course. I would love to take this for a longer ride, but with snow and everything, it, it wasn't getting much traction, wasn't too fun, didn't make for a good video. So anyway, take care, thanks for watching, I'll definitely have more of the Subaru Brat coming in the future. So thanks for watching, like and subscribe, I'll see you next time, and hit the bell.